I get it, but I just don't get it. But it's like Infinite is a unique game. A first person shooter without an online multiplayer component? Impossible! I mean, it has a very interesting story that most modern RPGs could only dream about. The single player, if you're just doing the bare minimum, is only about 6 to 8 hours, but that could have been easily extended beyond that. And that's pretty much my praises come to an end. Everything else about this game is incredibly average at best or just okay at worst. Being a first person shooter, I'll give you two guesses on what your primary weapons would be in this game. Bioshock Infinite doesn't really add anything interesting or new to the gambit of usable guns. You have your standard pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and sniper rifles, and that's about it. There's nothing fancy here. The guns even look generic to the point that there's only one model for each. Both the shotgun and the machine guns have variant versions. But in the shotgun's case, there's just no reason to ever use it seeing how you only have three shots and that's completely useless. Besides for personal preference, there's just no reason to need anything besides a pistol, a shotgun, and your own two fists. Weapons with scopes are pretty much useless since every enemy in this game runs you like a bat out of hell, so except for one segment where they forcibly give you a sniper rifle, you'll never need it. Speaking of which, the enemies in this game are just completely ridiculous in their difficulty. The common foot soldier which you face 99.9% .9 of the time are just complete pushovers. They run into you a shotgun wielding, light bolt throwing god among men with the batons out like they're actually going to get within 5 feet of you. You can just bat them away with ease with a couple of well placed shots and just keep it moving. But then there are the handymen and they're like complete bullet sponges. You know, they probably absorb too much damage when every single time you encounter one, there happens to be a vending machine in that encounter area where you can stop and buy health and ammo at. Now, Vickers out of this game's plasmids, one of the reasons the first Bioshock was so much fun was because of the plasmids they had. They weren't just powers because having superpowers is all the rage now. They actually meant something. They were important to the story and played a vital part in the reason for Raptor's downfall. The Vickers here are just here because this is the Bioshock game. They really feel just thrown in. Every ability does not need an alternate use, and if we do, let's try to think of something a bit more original than a trap each and every time. How about instead of a stupid lightning trap that anyone with half the brain could easily sidestep, you could just keep holding down the trigger and just keep on pulsing out of stream electricity. There are two powers you'll ever really need in this game, Shock Jockey and Possession. Shock Jockey paralyzes the poor sap in his tracks, allowing you to line up a headshot like it's picture day at school. Possession, well, it does exactly as its name says. It takes control of an enemy combatant for a while, and once the control is broken, they end up taking their own life. These powers are just there to be there. They don't really add anything to the overall story of the game. The story for this game is the number one reason why anyone should pick it up. It's absolutely amazing. You'll grow attached to each of the characters, so it makes me so sad that the resolution of this game is also the thing that hurts the most. Anything that requires a person to immediately go to the internet to fully understand the events that just transpired is ridiculous. I didn't need the internet though because because, you know, I'm a genius. And once you feel satisfied that you think understand everything, you realize the game's own logic and, you know, science makes this game's ending completely absurd. My name is Quantum, and I'll see you next time. Well, JK, thanks for watching, but at the end of that video, I said I completely dislike Sonic Colors. Baconstein, I wasn't really a big fan of Sonic Unleashed. I'm not really down with the Werehog. But you're absolutely right. Sonic Colors for the DS is an amazing game. I don't know why you dislike Sonic Generations though, you're just crazy. Hey guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button down there. Also check out the other videos Hashtag Gaming has to offer. See you later.